Very warm greetings to you as you join us on today's episode of Tax Matters. My name is Olumuiwa Matuluko. On today's episode of Tax Matters, we are going to tell you a tale of three stories. That is, three stories in one episode. You know, it's funny how they always say that the tax system rests on a tripod. Tax policy, tax legislation, and tax administration. A few days ago, uh, there was a guest on the AIT, the African Independent Television, who, in discussing global warming, flooding, extreme heat, was talking about the three E's. He spoke about enactment, that is of laws. He spoke about education, public enlightenment, which, of course, you know, is what Tax Matters does for the tax system in Nigeria. We bring you information and education on taxation. The third E, according to the gentleman, is enforcement. And it's pretty much the same in taxation. The laws are there to be obeyed. And when you fail to live by the rules, when you fail to obey the law, there's enforcement, enforcement of sanctions and punishments on those who run foul of the law. In Nigeria, we have the Federal Revenue Service. We also have the State Boss of Internal Revenue, albeit independent in their own rights. But they all come together under the umbrella of the Joint House Board. We also have the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN, which is the professional body of tax administrators and tax practitioners. So today, we are going to do everything in triple, triple, triple. We are going to tell you a story from the FIRS, another story from the CITN, and a third one from the Joint Task Board. The program is Tax Matters, and my name is Olumuiwa Matuluko. Welcome back. We begin with the story of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, where on Thursday, the 6th of June, the Field Operations Group of the FRS held its regional operational meeting, this time a joint one, bringing together management staff from the three regions of the FRS in Lagos area, Lagos Island, Lagos Mainland West, and Lagos Mainland East. Now, Lagos is a major contributor to the revenue basket of the country, Nigeria. And in Lagos, in Lagos area, there are 21 tax offices, light tax offices, medium tax offices, and micro and small taxpayer offices. To underscore the importance, the acting executive chairman of the FRS was personally in attendance to pilot affairs at the meeting, which was preceded on the previous day by a closed-door strategy meeting. While commending the entire workforce for a successful outing in the year 2012, Alaji Mashi used the occasion to set out his expectations for the year 2013. For 2013, we set an internal modest target of 5.72 trillion naira. Why I think this meeting is very important. If Lagos performs, Illa Revenue will perform. But if you don't perform, we are in trouble. And let us rise from this meeting then with a resolve that we can not but get it right. Earlier in his welcome address, the coordinating director, Field Operations Group, Mr. S.S. Ogumbeson, gave a report of task collections performance of the FRS in the first four months of 2013. Officially, as at the end of April, on the whole, we will say that we have achieved 83%. The oil revenue target of 3.6, of which we are expected to have collected 1.2 as at the end of April, we achieved 1.04 trillion, which is about 87%. For the non-oil revenue of two trillion, we're expected as at the end of April to have brought in 706 billion. We actually collected 528, which is 75 percent. The aggregate of this is giving us 83 percent. And I am happy to say that for the month of April, we achieved non-oil revenue local collection of 110 billion which is the highest 
we have ever witnessed in the last 35 years of our administration. Because we do not have the foreign components, we are not able to give you the performance. But I know that the achievement for this fifth month will significantly impact on the total collection. And we may be nearing something close to 90% by the time we we'll give you the figure early next week. The report is for the FRS target, which is a little higher than the government target. If we reduce this to government numbers, I can assure you that both the National Assembly and the Federal Ministry of Finance will keep clapping for us, so you can clap for yourself. We realize that there is room for improvement. We realize that with all the steps we are taking now, we will close the gap between now and the end of September. Mr. Ogumbeson also gave the scorecard of the performance of the various tax offices of the FRS in the Lagos region. Talking about room for improvement, talking about closing the gap, the field operations group staff do not work in isolation, but rather in close collaboration and with the support of other units within the FRS fold. Elijah Abdullahiata is the coordinating director modernization group at the FRS. This is the real year of change. We started just modernizing just the collection of tax from 2004, and that is just one model out of 10 models in ITAS. And this year alone, we're going to implement the entire model. Now, I want you to believe it, that you will no longer be seeing files as you see them today. They are all going to be in electronic format. It is a fantastic, very big change. Very big, from just one model, we're going to have about 10 models, the entire tax system. Among other things that we're going to make possible now is, we have connected so far 35 tax offices on the fiber optic, low fiber optic, by 15th July. 101 of our offices will be connected to fiber optic. And those of you that have an idea of telecoms, you know what it means. The difference between a fiber optic and a radio connection. We've been on a project to collect our VAT, to automate our VAT collection. And um, we had hitches, difficulties with the aviation people. They didn't want us to collect it. So hopefully, too, in the next two weeks, maximum, we will automate our bad collection at source. As you fly, as the, as the airline is being paid, VAT will be paid to FRS. We have been having problem of our money hanging in the banks, and I'm sure you have read last week or the week before, even the National Assembly complaining that a lot of our money is hanging. Now, in order to address that issue, what we did last year is to engage Nigeria in the bank settlement system. It's the only switch. All banks are linked to it. Therefore, any time any tax is paid in any bank, NIPS has the capability to sweep that money into our central bank account, and they've been doing that from, from the beginning of this year when we gave them the assignment. Now, the other leg that we still have a problem with is with the MDAs. Now, what MDAs do now, all their capital accounts in CBN, when they make payments to their contractors, they take the tax element to commercial banks who will route it back again to Central Bank. Now, Central Bank has a switching system that is working with Remita. We are working with Remita, and by Next week, we will do a test of FRS as an MDA, so that each time we pay our contractors, the VAT and withholding tax are also swept online, real time to our country in Central Bank. We have also developed an online tax clearance certificate. 
such that there is no intervention. Because we know from September this year the oil and gas is going to be fully computerized. So we want to be able to give them a tax plan certificate also online, real time. This, no doubt, can only mean two things. Improved revenue for government and better convenience for the taxpayer. It is a win-win situation. There was also breaking news from Mr. Osi Chuke, another coordinating director who came in straight to the meeting from a CITN event. I'm just coming from the CITN council meeting where one of our own, Mr. MACDK, stepped in the saddle as the president of the CITN. <laughs> Yesterday was the AGM, Mr. Hagwa um, and two other FRS staff were also elected to the council of CITN. In separate interviews, we sought further amplification from the acting executive chairman and Mr. Ogumbeson. We have three regions in Lagos, 21 offices. Would you say you are pleased with the performance of the offices between January and now? I will tell you that Lagos region accounts for over 65% of the collection of the FRS. Now, the level of collection for the month of April is record breaker with respect to non-oil revenue. And it's going to be higher next month, there's no doubt. And it will also be higher again for August. So May, June, July, that's how it will continue until we get to the end of September. If you look at the nationwide collection performance, January to date, will you say that you're on track towards achieving government's target for you and your own target, because we know that you always set your own internal target. Are you on track? We're on track. And um, as I said earlier, we try to increase our own internal target to motivate the staff to put them to perform better so that we can collect our target. And I'm sure all things being equal, God willing, uh, we'll perform wonders. We'll try to exceed or do better than last year. Uh, now, there seems to be some challenges yeah. in acquiring taxpayer identification number. Uh, are there new conditions now? Have things changed? Or is it still like it was at the beginning? Nothing has changed. We encourage taxpayers to walk into any of our office and ask for their tin, which is free. Taxpayers are not to pay anything or to give anything for getting the tin because it's uh, one of the things required now for a taxpayer to open an account. It's equally required when you want to import uh, goods from abroad. And uh, it equally helps us to track the taxpayer and the taxpayer will have record in our office too so that anywhere he transacts something, he uses that tin to capture the transaction. So it is good for both of us and it's free of charge. If should there be any problem, they can call our office in the headquarters to complain and I'll look at it. What about task clearance certificate? Task clearance certificate too. The law says it should be obtained within two weeks. And if it is not possible, the taxpayer should be informed why he cannot get his tax clearance certificate within two weeks. And um, once you pay your tax, TCC is equally free. You don't have to give money to get your tax clearance certificate. How long it will take for you to clear my container? I they do a maga. They say we will go bring our team. Our team? Which team? Custom don't change Oga. I never I say we. I want to consult FRS with my business. I will talk to Gaba myself. You are fired. Oga. Oga Gaba. Which will be this our team again? The taxpayer identification number. Now the only way where you fit take do business with Nigerian Custom Service now will you fit process your own free tin sharp sharp for any FRIS office. Soji. You don't suck me. No 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 no. Get our team. 
na, na. This message now from Federal Inland Revenue Service and Nigeria Custom Service. Okay, don't call me. That's man, now you. Sit down. How long it does it go to bring the tax clearance certificate for me? Oga, okay, once you give me the money, the tax clearance certificate go ready now, now. Now, now? Yes, Oga. Okay. Oh, wait, make I bring the money. Wait, wait. Agent for Federal Inland Revenue Service? This one, a Wururu person. Come for here. Guy, forget all these Wururu people. Go any Federal Inland Revenue Service office where they near you. Go collect the original tax clearance certificate. To know the original tax clearance certificate, the tax certificate must get FIRS watermark. It go get signature on top of the FIRS seal and the name of the tax office where they on top of the certificate must they correct. No print, no give, no even collect fake tax clearance certificate. FIRS don't want say anybody we then catch with fake tax clearance certificate. Hmm. Now jail straight. For more information, visit www.firs.gov.ng or any FIRS office close to you. FIRS, it pays to pay your tax. You have had the breaking news. Mr. Mark Anthony DK, quintessential tax man, director of tax policy and legislation at the Federal Inland Revenue Service, and until Wednesday, the 5th of June 2013, the vice president of the CITN is now the 11th president of the Chartered Institute of Tazion of Nigeria. Like others before him, Mr. DK will be in office for the next two years, 2013 to 2015. Mr. DK has been on the council of the CITN for many years, a chartered accountant and a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Tazion of Nigeria. Mr. DK is a thoroughbred tax professional. He was secretary of the Professor Dr. Phillips Study Group on the review of the Nigerian tax system, which midwived the ongoing reforms of the Nigerian tax system. And to which body, of course, the acting executive chairman of the FRS, Elijah Kabiru Mashi, belonged. For many years, Mr. DK served in the oil and gas department of the Federal Revenue Service. Formerly investiture is being eagerly awaited, but in a brief but symbolic ceremony, Held in the boardroom of the CITN in Lagos, Mr. J.F.S. Jagede, the 10th president of the CITN, handed over to Mr. D.K. as the 11th president of the CITN. In his acceptance speech, Mr. D.K. gave a brief insight into what to expect during his tenure. We shall focus our attention on the following areas in the next two years. One, develop the technical and research capabilities of the Institute and position it for optimal results. Three, accelerate the processes for the establishment of a tax academy for Nigeria. Four, instill a culture of greater accountability in all our activities and processes. Once again, I'm humbled by this opportunity offered to serve the Institute in the capacity as the 11th President and Chairman of Council. And by God's grace, I will not fail you and our team members. Tax Matters also spoke to the Adgon President of the CITN, Mr. GFS Jagede, on his achievements during his two-year tenure. You know, in CITN, we don't have personal achievements. You know, it's uh, one transition of presidential year to another. So all achievements belong to council. The only thing that happens is that within a period, somebody has to be the head of council, and that is the president. Because the way we work is that council ratifies whatever decisions we might have taken. And... Council takes full responsibility for, for that. So let me start with what really happened during my tenure. The first and foremost, the tax preparer's house, which is the first of its kind for any tax institutes in Africa, and was conceptualized. The construction started during that regime. And now it has been progressing. And the, by God's grace, by December, the building should be ready for commissioning. Oh. Secondly, the 
tax system witnessed some uh, improvement in terms of legislation. In 2011, you will discover that uh, Mr. President signed into law the Personal Income Tax Amendment, of which the Shatter District of Taxation of Nigeria was part and parcel. We submitted input into that, we contributed our own quota towards the attainment of that feat by federal government. Now, also during that time, I was elected the first president of Association of African Tax Institutes. By God's grace, in uh, August this year, the investiture will take place in Ghana. Very humble indeed, attributing all his achievements to the entire council. Now to the Joint Task Board. On Wednesday, the 22nd of May 2013, the Joint Task Board brought together the chairman of the various state boards of internal revenue, the Federal Revenue Service, the Federal Minister of Finance, and the Immigration Service for a three-day leadership training program. Again, to underscore the importance of the workshop, the acting executive chairman of the FIRS, who is also the chairman of the Joint Task Board, was on hand to declare the training program open. Today's families, organizations, and nations are yearning for not just leaders, but the right type of leaders. Leadership has now become the glue that brings and holds it all together for institutions that work effectively and efficiently. It has transformed groups to prosper and actualize their full potentials. On the need for the training program, team leader of Restaurant Consulting, facilitators of the program, had this to say. Now, I'd just like to give a brief overview of this program. It's called Leadership, Great Leaders, Great Teams, Great Results. Now, what's the essence of this program? The program is designed to help leaders not only have the right mindset, but also the skill set and the tool set to deliver greatness for the organizations that they lead. In other words, they are delivering on the goals and objectives that they were set up, set up for. And not only doing that, but also ensuring that they create sustainable institutions. In other words, whether or not they are there, those organizations will still deliver on the objectives. We expect that uh, from this first beginning to the end of the uh, program, uh, we will live here as uh, uh, better uh, leaders. We are on the home stretch. If you are an avid viewer of this program, Tax Matters, you will know that in recent times we have been talking about transfer pricing. We recall that on the episode on which we featured the annual task conference, we brought you excerpts from a paper delivered by one Mr. Oyedele at the annual task conference and the one by Mr. Bojubola, who was represented by a colleague. We have also brought you an interview with Mr. A.J. Bamidele, who also came on a guest on the program to talk about transfer pricing. It's a new field, maybe not new, but now just being understood very well in this environment. And to keep up the pressure to make sure that the knowledge gap is bridged. The Federal Inland Revenue Service is organizing a one-day public sensitization program on transfer pricing regulations in Nigeria. It will hold on Friday, the 21st of June, 2013, at Lagos Airport Hotel on Obafemi Way in Ikeja, Lagos, just from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Speakers will be Mr. Oyedele, who has been on the program, and Mr. Bamidele, who has also been on this program. We want to thank you most sincerely for being part of this episode of Tax Matters, and we hope and trust that you'll be here next week to do it with us. Thank you very much, and have a nice week ahead of you.